There has been a concerted effort uh, by members of the U.S. government uh, in the Trump administration. We don't hear much from John Bolton these days. Apparently, he's been told to lay low. Trump is getting a little annoyed with his mustache, I think. But Mike, Mike Pompeo is out there. There is a real attempt uh, by forces in the State Department, at least, uh, to go to war with Iran in some fashion. And we've had another attack on tankers in the, I believe this was in the Strait of Hormuz. Um, the, this follows up uh, an attack that happened April 13th or something way around there. Four tankers supposedly attacked. Only two sustained any type of damage <laughs> at the time where the press seems to have forgotten that part of the story. Uh, and that was supposedly Iran. Here is the U.S. releasing a video. It claims shows Iran removing an unexploded mine from a Gulf tanker right after the, um, the attack. There is also um, Mike Pompeo has blamed Iran on this attack. President Trump went on Fox and Friends saying, uh, you saw the boat. It has Iran written all over it. They didn't want the evidence left behind. They don't know uh, that we have things that can detect in the dark that work very well. We have that. It was them that did it. Um, <laughs> apparently, they now know that. Uh, but American officials released the video on Thursday, said they show Iranian boat crew hours after the attack removing a limpet mine attached to the hull of the damaged Kokua Courageous, a tanker operated by the Japanese company Coca Sangyo. Here is um, here is Donald Trump on Fox and Friends. Here it is, Let's, uh, Mr. President. Talk about something in the news today. Uh, we've seen those images of the uh, oil tankers on fire out in the Gulf, and uh, Iran says, "Hey, don't blame us for this. Uh, we didn't do it. We think it was an accident." I know Mike Pompeo has blamed Iran. What sort of evidence do we have that they've done it? And what are we going to do about it? Well, Iran did do it, and you know they did it because you saw the boat. I guess one of the mines didn't explode, and it's probably got essentially Iran written all over it. And you saw the boat at night trying to take the mine off and successfully took the mine off the boat. Yep. And that was exposed, and that was their boat that was them. Uh, and they didn't want the evidence left behind. I guess they don't know that we have uh, things that we can detect mm -hmm. in the dark that work very well. So uh, we have that, and I know you put it on. So, no, it was them that did it. And, hey, look, President so Obama made do a deal. It? President Obama made a deal that was an outrage. Okay, let's, the, uh, there, there let's, we go. Uh, so Mr. President Obama made a deal. Um, the only problem with this story seems to be that, they, uh, that the U.S. government, which seems hell-bent on blaming Iran for this story, uh, the, this attack, that it was a, a function of mines put on the side of the boat, it's a super weird way of doing this, right? As opposed to like sort of, I don't know. But I don't know. I don't attack boats on a regular basis. Uh, here's Marco Rubio weighing in. Not just the intelligence shows, uh, shows Iran was behind the Gulf attacks. Common sense does too. It's a fact that only the uh, Iranian guard, the uh, Iranian, what is, what is the, our, our, the, um, the revolutionary, revolutionary guard, guard. Corps Navy has the ability to place mine like these. Well, and, that's <laughs> and it's surrogates who uh, uh, and it's surrogates who can conduct fast boat attacks such as this one. Um, Marco Rubio, little Marco, apparently is um, uh, extending common sense, perhaps where it doesn't belong. Here is the owner of the um, tanker. Japanese um, Yutakaka, uh, Yutaka Katada. He is the president of the 
Kokuka Sengo is the company that owns the um, the boats. Apparently, uh, he wasn't clued in that the idea is to blame Iran and to blame Iran by attaching mines because this guy who does arguably have a vested interest, right, in um, not having his boats attacked came out and said the following. I will read it because uh, he's speaking in Japanese, but it's translated underneath. Go ahead. The crew is saying that it was hit by a flying object. They are saying that something came flying to put a bomb on the side is something that we are not thinking. <laughs> yeah. In other words, um, whatever that video is of, it's not of what happened. Well, and of course, I mean, the Shinzo Abe was in Iran meeting with the Iranian leadership at the same time, which would be very odd timing. I mean, like these... Iran did we, they say... They really want to stick it to Japan. I mean, well, that's the, the thing idea. is Iran has no problem with Japan. I mean, it has good relations with Japan and certainly no problem with Norway. And they they have said that basically diplomatically the United States has to pay a, a price for lying and destroying this deal. But in actuality, all of the problems that they have with Iran have existed like... Yeah, Iran supports Hezbollah. Iran is on different side of a proxy war in Syria. That's still the case. And ever since, I mean, Iran is still following the deal, even as they've pulled out of it. International monitors are basically saying like, well, Iran technically left to make a point, but they're still upholding it. Mm -hmm. So this is just ludicrous. And, you know, obviously incredibly dangerous. And, you know, I mean, we saw the same thing in Venezuela. They're just very bad. Um, it, you know, New York Times even did a debunk on the video that they were putting around suggesting that the, uh, you know, that the attack was done by the government. And then the video was clearly demonstrated it was thrown by an opposition protester. And that was debunked in a matter of weeks. I mean, usually these lies like in Vietnam and Iraq take years. Maybe it, people do learn lessons. Well, I think it's also a question of maybe the technology is such. these. Oh, days I think that's definitely that, part of it. Of that, course. um there is just too many other ways in which things can get debunked and there's it's too hard for stories to be put out there and not be um uh responded to and and it would be interesting to even you know as you know it, it would be interesting if we had the ability to go back in time and see what would have happened in the build up to the Iraq war had there been, frankly, Twitter and YouTube and uh, and Facebook, if stories from McClatchy that debunked what was going on in terms of the um, march to war, if they had been widely disseminated as opposed to being on, you know, page 18 of uh, the Times occasionally or something like that, uh, but picked up another life, on social media, it would, it would be interesting to know. Um, maybe, maybe in some way we have, um, we don't really have a way of testing it, but in some way that maybe we have the ability now with social media to stop major things like this, right? Like even uh, Yemen, to the extent that there has been a an attempt, obviously it passed in the Senate and the House, it was not veto-proof, to stop our support for the Yemen conflict. But I wonder if that could have happened 10 years ago. No, because even just the fact that people centered it as we're literally supporting, and I will use the word genocide now, was not getting any press attention. I mean, that was the MSNBC didn't talk about it for a year. Yep. Uh, and, you know, and actually, I, I do want to note that Twitter actually did censor a group that was reporting just they were showing visuals of the atrocities on Twitter and Twitter said that it was in violation of their standards. So that's a good thing to note about the failures of these companies as well. But I agree. No way it would have happened in a different media environment. Unfortunately, our current government really doesn't care if a war has popular legitimacy or not, or if the basis has been widely debunked by the media. Uh, I think I, Trump cares about the I popularity. <laughs> I think it actually, every time there's a setback for things like this and it filters to him, this is actually an example of where his specific nutty personality matters. Right. Last time, I mean, a month ago, he was with the generals, apparently. He was like, what? 
We're getting into a war. I don't want a real war. I just want to make it look like I'm want, being tough. I want to talk tough. I want to look tough. 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 Guy. So no war, just tough talk. Maybe his nutty personality will save us in this instance. Well, a strong example of better him than Pence in this type of area for sure. Yeah, fair enough. Tough. I'm going to be tough. 